Hello everyone and welcome back to Star Control Oakham Masters. I'm so sorry it's taken so long for me to get this out. Um, it's just been difficult. Uh, I had really no idea what I was doing. I should have really looked up the game a little bit more. Um, and basically I had to play quite a lot to work out where I had to actually go. Um, goodbye Oz. Um, but yeah, basically uh, it took a while for me to kind of understand what I, where I have to go and stuff like that. Apparently I was missing something big um, that the um, Aralu told me about Beetlejuice. I'm going to have to go there eventually. Um, but for now, uh, we've just got the Tylo Shield, if you can remember that far back. Um, now because I haven't um, recorded for so long, I'm actually going to upload two videos tonight, two Star Control videos, and then hopefully we should be back on track with the Star Control. Um, it really annoyed me that it hadn't been out for so long, and those last two videos were very slow going out. So I'm going to definitely upload two tonight. Uh, this one is about 17 minutes long, and I'm going to upload like another 20 minute one. So that should be fine. That should kind of even out the kind of missed missed uh, episode times. So should be back on track now. So this is episode 29 now, um, and we've just got the Tower Shit as I said. So we're going to go off to the Dinyari now. Um, that guy who we saw um, on the uh, the Umgar planet, uh, who was controlling the Umgar, it seemed. And now that we've got the Tyler Shield, which apparently can stop um, these uh, mind control effects, we should be able to go and take him down, or at least, you know, capture him, take him for ransom or something. Um, and we should be able to save the Umgar. Um, I don't know if what that's going to achieve, but, you know, the Umgar are funny guys, they will do something. Um, so, yeah, let's go. Pretty close to the Orionis constellation is where we need to go, um, and I can't remember. I think it's Beta Orionis One is the Umgar planet, so let's head over there. Um, from last time, we've got in our uh, in our squad, we've got uh, is that seven Or ships, Or's Nemesis, two Spathy ships that we got early on, and then we've also got three Yehat ships. And if we ever run out of ships now, we don't really need to buy any more. We just need to go over to the uh, the Yehat Rebellion, the Veep Neeps, and they'll just give us four new ships, which is pretty cool. Um, so we pretty much don't have to spend any more RUs on um, convoy ships, or battleships, or whatever. So here we go, we're at uh, the right star, lots of Umgar flying around, and we'll just make a beeline for Planet 1 of BT Orionis. Let's see what happens. Let's just save the game quickly before... Just in case something does happen, he does something stupid. Uh, why aren't you dead? Oh, what a bummer. I will remedy this situation. Find someone who will kill you. I, uh, I cannot compel you. Your mind is closed to me. How can this be? I am forced to resort to more primitive measures. Oongar Commander, summon your ten combat chips and attack this intruder instantly. Ah, so he's resorted to... Uh... To old school methods of uh, mind control. Oh, here we go. Oh, geez, he's close, but uh, oh, that was <laughs> that wasn't too bad. I I feel that this may not be too difficult, considering that those all were a lot. Oh, they've already crashed into a planet. My bullets pretty much hit them one one hit knockout. Just two bullets, I think. So two hellball cannons to the Umgar, and they're down. So we got to destroy ten. That's uh, that's two already. There's three. Um, not. I mean, it's probably a bit repetitive, but, you know, it's a lot of RUs. Oh, wow, that guy just crashed right into us. We have got pretty much still a full complement, full 151 crew, 150 from the crew slots, including the captain. And they've only got, what, like 10, 10 crew, so my cannons do 6 damage. And their, their attack is very short range, and they're very slow. It's quite difficult for them to, uh, to get in close. That was pretty close, though. Um, the AI are pretty good at um, controlling that... Uh, that movement, the, um, the backwards thrust, which is a bit strange. I don't know why they wouldn't just make it forwards. It'd be a lot easier. Um, but I suppose it would be quite confusing in like real life to have a ship do that. Um, but there we go. Two more to go. Um, two more. Oh, geez, he got a bit close. But we uh, made sure that he didn't get a hit on us. And still, with a full set of crew, he's going for the final kill. There we are. So how much RUs do we get from that? 10 times what? Oh wow, so not too much, but uh, still still a good amount. I'm, I'm happy with 870 RU. Um, 
That's enough for what? 870 crew? Oh, look at this guy now. Somehow, the injuries I suffered when the Urquan crashed triggered some kind of a personality transformation. I became evil and spiteful, cruel and nasty, whimsically unpleasant. You may have also noticed I gained some kind of temporary psychic powers. Well, I just want to let you know I'm cured, Captain. I don't know exactly how, but when you were fighting those Umga ships, a chunk of the seaman fell down on my head and gave me quite a whack. Ouch, ouch, it still hurts. When I awoke, the universe had ceased to be the dark and hostile place I had previously thought it to be. Instead, I was overwhelmed, yes, even awed, by the beauty and perfection of it all. I also discovered that I had completely lost those wicked mental powers and can now look forward to a new life filled with happiness, butterflies, and goodwill for all. Your job is done, Captain. You have saved me. Now you can safely remove your safety protection device and leave. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Eddie. Why are you looking at me like that, Captain? Don't you believe me? You question my word? Okay, okay, so I was lying. Big deal. So what? Boy, are you a pain. Do you know that? What do you want from me? My life? Oh, you do? Hmm. Well, as an alternative, let me make this little suggestion. If you don't kill me, I'll help you do whatever you wish. <laughs> Is it a deal, Captain? Hmm? Hmm? What kind of deal, Dinyari? I don't trust this guy for some reason. I wonder uh, why. I get the basic idea. You want to overthrow the Urquan. Bravo! Good idea! Way to go! <laughs> I too wish to see the Urquan beaten, humiliated, destroyed. And I alone possess a unique ability that will help you achieve your goal. I can use my psychic powers to temporarily distract the Urquan, confuse it for a few seconds. Presumably, you will use this moment to strike a lethal blow against the Urquan. Such a plan cannot fail, Captain. We must see to that. Alright then, but uh, any tricks and uh, you'll be sucking a vacuum. No tricks, Captain. <laughs> no tricks. I fear you cruelly misjudge me. I am on your side now. Together, we will make a great team, Captain. This day, this moment, shall go down forever in the history of our galaxy. I am coming aboard your ship now. I will make a nest in the pressurized section of your ship's hold. When you wish to talk with me, I will be there. So, we've got the uh, Dinyari on board, but I wonder what the uh, Umgar think of us now. Let's just re-enter the planet and see if they have anything to say. Hail, hail, human earth. Great hero has returned. Oh, my myth is quickly. Just looking at him on the monitor. What a smile. What sparkling eyes. What nice, evil structure. He one who has saved us from mental compulsion of evil talking back. Hail! 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 Both great hero! We great creatures speak to us how we are born. So first of all, we've definitely noticed that their uh, speech is like a lot more fluent. Um, they did seem a bit strange at first. Uh, let's see, what options have we got? Uh, last one, that's good. All the secrets. Secrets? Hmm? You want secrets? Our secrets? Oh, you made fatal mistake, human! <laughs> good joke, huh? <laughs> Scared you? Sure, we'll tell our secrets. Now let me see. What are secrets? <gasps> oh yes, remember, it's about my cons. You see, my cons only are the race we know of that have same kind of biotechnical skills as Uga. But the amazing thing, they do all with their own bodies. Don't need to. They just think genetic modification and it happened. We found that pretty hard to understand. So, when nobody looking, <laughs> we clonk one on head, bring it back here to the whole world, and slice it up. Tipple's stunning. 
those guys not product of any natural evolutionary process. They constructs. Some kind of multi-purpose biological tool. We don't know who made them or for what purpose, but they way beyond anything we ever heard of. We not figure out much before kitchen samples all gross. So, guess that pretty much all a big secret. Oh, do us a favor. Please, not tell anybody about honking my car. It kind of against Urquan laws and not want to get my car mad at us. I'll make sure I don't tell anyone, but uh, I think that's pretty much the best information we're going to get from them. Micons are kind of like not even evolutionary, they're just tools. So we have to go now, no. bye! Great human. I give you this funny feeling. Would like to know what feeling is? Oh good, I tell you. My feeling is that great hero stuff. Well, boring. Not funny at all. You only say hail, hail, hail so many times before it starts to lose appeal. So, instituting slight deviations in course of our relationship. Specifically, instead of being dull and lightless great hero, you now glamorous and exciting great enemy! Oh, we give you some of our drone ships to make even more interesting. Yes, this is going to be lots more fun. Here, let me show you. Oh, the Umgar, they always have to do something stupid, don't they? Oh, well, I might as well destroy one run because it's a planet and I'll have an infinite number of them. But uh, another 87 I use. I'm not going to complain. So let's just get away. Oh, they always they always muck it up. They could have had a good alliance there, but I guess they're with the Urquan, so it wouldn't have ended too well in the end. Um, having said that, though, we have got the Yehat in a massive civil war, and the Urquan haven't really cared at all. Um, so I don't know. Let's uh, let's go out into the world now. So we've got the uh, Dinyari now. We've uh, got the talking pet. Let's, uh, let's see if we can talk to it, get any information. Captain, uh, the Taylor device on board this vessel is uh, giving me a headache. Please remove it. Now, Captain. It is foolish to resist. Hmm. It remains more effective than I thought. You're still able to disobey. Ah, uh, well. What can I do for you, Captain? Let's see if we can get some sort of uh, hints from him. Maybe he can, like, give us some ideas on what to do now. The first thing I do is to make sure I have a strong ship and food. Which is what we've got, so that was useful. Um, oh, what about their their race? Maybe some information on their race. I consider such a question to be intrusive and impolite, but that is consistent with your behavior. What do you want to know? Okay, what about the uh, history of your people, Mr. Dinyari person? That'd be useful to know about. Over 20,000 years ago, my species was happy and carefree. Living a life of peace and contentment on the surface of our world, bent to fork. We spent our time gathering foods, creating art, and compelling each other to do the boring chores. Then, a ship from the sentient milieu landed, and, well, <laughs> things got pretty complicated. Ah, here we go. Maybe it can give us some information about its point of view on the sentient milieu coming on its planet. The sentient milieu were a bloodthirsty empire that ruled a large section of the galaxy for thousands of years. If you've heard that the milieu was a cooperative union of sentient species, it's lies, all lies. The Urquan were just a part of milieu, but their dark and evil hearts confused the entire association with a sinister ambiance. Alright, so what about the war between the Dinyari and the sentient milieu? Well, after we'd been in contact with the milieu for a while, they decided to kill all of our species. Now does that sound like a reasonable, friendly bunch of aliens? Hmm? Huh? Does it, Captain? No, it does not. Well, the war was over pretty quick. My species lost. Instead of just killing us, the Urquan modified our genes. Our children were born non-sentient. Dumb animals. For the past 20 millennia, we Denari have been serving the Urquan in the most demeaning way they could imagine. Acting as mindless translators who communicate the words of inferior races. Yeah, that doesn't sound much like uh, what we heard from uh, pretty much everyone else. You mean my superior brain? 
My mental prowess? I don't want to talk about it. Oh, come on, tell us. Captain, I don't think you meant to ask about my powers. Didn't you mean to ask about flowers? Um, maybe? Flowers are beautiful and smell nice. Now, be a good human. Leave me alone. Okay, fine. The conversation was getting boring anyway. Excellent idea, Captain. You must have a great deal of work to attend to. Goodbye. So, um, we didn't really get much out of him at all, he was quite reluctant to uh, say anything, or at least anything truthful. Um, uh, something tells me we should believe the Melnorme and the Urquan more than him. Um, very, two very different accounts of what went on in the war between the Melu and the Zanyari. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna believe um, the Melnorme for now, since they seem a lot more truthful. And speaking about the Melnorme, I think it's about time we meet them again, um, get some more information, uh, kind of get some more hints on what to do next, because of course, as I said, the Dinyari, not very helpful. So I'm going to go back to Earth, go back to Sol, and uh, then we can call the Melnorme in the next episode, which again is coming up uh, straight after this one. So you can just um, watch this and then watch the next one, um, which will be episode 30. So I'll see you then when we talk to the Melnorme about some more awesome information.